We are now joined by Tim Brando, Fox Sports, who some think should be the commissioner of college football. He was in Pullman, Washington over the weekend and now has Texas and also West Virginia coming up, of course, Saturday in Austin. Tim, thanks for your time. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been able to get some of your truth serum. Should Kansas be ranked? Yes, absolutely they should be. And uh, they're not alone, by the way. Seems that I think, to be perfectly frank, though, uh, David, what we're looking at this year is we really don't have room for all the teams that should be ranked because between, gosh, I'd say number four and number 40, it's really balanced. You know, I mean, it is really balanced. We could extend the top 25 to, you know, Casey Kaysen's top 40. You know, I, <laughs> I got a letter from an old lady in Penn State, you know, um, <laughs> Because there's just not a lot of uh, separation once you get past the top three. Now, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not convinced Alabama's the lead anymore. I mean, I'm not. Certainly not finding out anything blowing out Vanderbilt, okay, and an, another, another SEC network yawner. Um, we'll find out in the coming weeks ahead now because their schedule is about to pick up a little uh, with Arkansas and then the uh, – the A and M game that everybody's anticipating with bated breath, uh, so we'll probably know a little bit more. But you can't not have them three. Uh, Georgia and Ohio State are really the two teams that are playing the best, and they're playing the best with arguably the best players. Um, uh, Alabama is there in large measure because of uh, their brand and who they are and what they've you know done historically, and they've earned that. So I've got no problem putting them at three but then after that okay where where i had baylor in the preseason you know you could put anybody there right now i've got michigan there but uh you know they they didn't exactly blow the doors off maryland last week and uh a play here or there and maryland might have won the game you know the opening kick ball bounced off the kid's head and gave him the ball at the 10-yard line for an easy touchdown so uh, I was more impressed with the Terrapins than I was with Michigan. But I, I, I don't know if anybody else I want to put it for. Couldn't do that with Oklahoma after, after what happened to them against Kansas State. So, yeah, Kansas deserves to be ranked. I think the team that I had that lost to Oregon, lost a 12-point lead in three and a half minutes, Washington State. Uh, Cam Ward, the, the kid from Incarnate Word, was really the star of that game for 56 and a half minutes. I mean, he was. And, and yet, it was Bo Nix that had the career day and brought his team from behind uh, to win the game. So, it's crazy go-nuts time out there in college football. There's so many teams playing well that aren't getting any coverage whatsoever. Okay? I mean, not getting any coverage whatsoever. I mean, look at the Big 12 schedule this week. All right? Texas Tech beats Texas. Okay? Uh, comes from 14 down to do it. Uh, K-State goes on the road and beats Oklahoma. And for their efforts, we're excited to tell the uh, alumni base of both schools, you'll be playing each other on ESPN Plus this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, think, <laughs> no, nobody wants to talk about these teams that aren't brand names. And, uh, you know, we, we look at the uh, – we, we look at the mirror and we find that it, it, uh, we're as responsible, those of us in the media, as any, because we're too damn lazy to keep up with what's going on at all these schools. Gee, we don't want to have to cover 40 teams. We'd really rather cover just three or four. You know, that's what's happening in college football right now. And we're all guilty of it. When I say we're all, I mean all the networks. I mean all the websites. I mean everybody. Okay. And uh, it's really, a, it's a shame. But, until such time as, as the media is forced to do it, and they will be when we expand to 12 or 16 teams, this is the way it's going to be, apparently. Well, Tim, you, you bring up since the last time we've had you on, the, the playoff is, you know, expanded at least in, in, in idea now, and that's going to happen. Yeah. But yeah. is that that's kind of a necessity based on what you said of between 4 and 40, there's a lot of teams even. That's the new reality of college football. Yeah, you're going to have the, your – Georgia's and Ohio State's at the top that have a bunch of five-star guys, but the transfer portal is kind of an equalizer. It's it's changed it everything. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, look who's leading all these teams that we're talking about. You know, I had two transfers in my game, one a veteran, another that came up through the FCS, that incarnate word played in the Southland Conference, 
And like I said, for 56 and a half minutes, Cam Ward was the star of that game. Uh, and Washington State's defense is good. They, they're a veteran crew. They got a lot of fifth year guys on that defensive side, and they kept uh, Oregon out of the end zone for the entire first half, even though Oregon had outgained them two to one. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, um, it's pretty amazing. I just love what Joey McGuire said after that game in the locker room. Okay. The Big 12 college football has come through Lubbock, baby. <laughs> has to come through Lubbock. <laughs> I love that. And, uh, you know, we're 1 and 0 in the league. And uh, he was, Texas, it appears, is not back again. Uh, so, you know, good for him. Uh, but if these coaches don't pump up their own skirts, Okay. Mm-hmm. If they don't tell everybody and their kids and their alumni base, you know, shout from the mountaintop. We're really good. Nobody's going to pay attention. It and did. clearly that's, that's obvious. Nobody's going to pay attention. Yeah. In fact, we had Joey on right before you and that he, that's kind of what he was saying. Too many programs yeah. are told why they aren't good or why they can't be good. And his job is to make sure that his program and those around it in it, playing for it, recruiting it, know that it can be. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know it, 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 David, what's happening is it, it's so it's so much easier, and columnists do this, okay. Uh, reporters do this on television. Producers of studio shows do this. Instead of let's let's investigate why Texas Tech is so good, why don't we just hang Sark in effigy yeah. again? And, and let's it's easier that way. We don't have to really know anything about Texas Tech or Joey McGuire, or any of those storylines. to But but we do know Sark, and we do know uh, his situation, because, you know, it's Texas. We have to keep up. So we do know about them. They're a brand name. All right? That's what's going on. Um, you know, Kansas State, we got to throw dirt. we got to throw a lot of dirty water on them because they lost to Tulane. Well, does anybody know how good Tulane is? Or, or Willie Fritz, the job he's done there. No, probably don't even know Willie Fritz coaches there. Um, and now Kansas State goes on the road, beats Oklahoma, and that shouldn't sh- surprise anybody. How many times have they done it before? They've done it a lot, more than any other Big 12 team. They've done it in Norman, Oklahoma. So, you know, there's just – I could go on and on about how media has decided that we're just going to not cover most of college football – we're going to cover, you know, the, the four teams we think are getting in, and then the others we have to because they have such alumni, such a large alumni base, and they get good ratings. We're going to continue to put them on, no matter how many times they screw the pooch. We're going to keep putting them on the air. Okay, it's like Tiger Woods could be twenty five shots back, right? We're still going to see every shot. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and if. And if uh, let me see, uh, Dickie Fried is leading the golf tournament, so Tiger barely made the cut. Let's talk about him. <laughs> That's what's going on, fellas, in a, in a nutshell. Oh, we're, we're one week into full Big 12 play, Tim, and uh, because they both lost last week and we're already hearing how this is a down year for the conference because Texas and OU aren't, you know, unbeaten and, you know, on top of the world, and, and I just think that that's the complete opposite of what's actually happening. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's yeah, what happens every year. Mediocre. Yeah, it's a mediocre league now. Yeah, exactly. If, if, a, if a Big 12 champion winds up with a 10-2 and two record, now you know the league really wasn't very good. Yeah. That's going to be the narrative, okay? I, I personally believe Baylor can win every game they've got left. Mm-hmm. But I also think they could easily lose another game. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing that they won't, okay, because I had them in the four position when the uh, before the season started, so I obviously believe in them. Uh, but this is going to be a tough out against Oklahoma State. I've got Oklahoma State. If you live, where do I have them? I've got them five. I put them in the five hole this week. Yeah, because I think they've earned that. Uh, and I've got NC State six. And nobody, nobody is talking about NC State potentially beating Clemson. I was talking about that months ago. Okay, and by the way, uh, Clemson should have lost last week to Wake Forest. Wake should have won that football game. Uh, and I don't know if you guys noticed it, but here's how much, you know, the college football length matters to the worldwide leader. In the middle of a close game, they're oh. doing cut-ins with Aaron Judge at bat. Oh, God. Okay? Yeah. 
we're having to listen to Michael K. call it. Folks, it's not even a record anywhere except with the New York Yankees. <laughs> Nowhere else. Okay? We've had more than 61 home runs. Guys have hit 61 or better home runs in Major League Baseball. But, you know, the uh, – the, 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 the mad scientists in, in Bristol believe that was worth interrupting Sean McDonough and, and Blackledge calling that game. You know, I, I'm not a fan. I was up in my booth getting ready for my game, and I was ready to throw beer cans at the, <laughs> at the television. Box. Okay? But that's how college football is being treated. Okay? And, uh, oh, wait a minute. That's, uh, I mean, it, just, it, it makes no sense, okay, how little. The number two most popular sport in America is treated by the national press. Electronic and other places, too. Tim, one of those teams in your top ten, uh, Tennessee. Uh, they've got off to a really nice start, obviously. Hen and Hooker and Heupel and the offense and just the, the whole package right now seems to be, be working pretty well for them. But they've got LSU uh, yeah. and then they've got Alabama over the next two weeks. Just what are your thoughts on where the Vols are right now and now this next like couple-week journey starting off with uh, Baton Rouge this weekend? Well, well, I put them up there, but get, again, because I didn't think anybody else deserved to be in the ninth position besides them. Okay, uh, Oregon, in my opinion, even though it's lost a game, its game was to Georgia. You know, essentially that was a road game for them. You know, in Atlanta, and uh, they call it a neutral site, but it's not. And and I see Oregon has made terrific strides since then with some pretty big wins, but but you know Tennessee could easily lose in Baton Rouge. I mean, they could easily lose in Baton Rouge. And, and by the way, if they did, I wouldn't be shocked if they came back and, and possibly beat Alabama at home. I mean, that's how crazy this season is. It would be easy for, for Tennessee to, you know, be everyone's Hendon Hooker's BMOC all this week going into Baton Rouge. And, and those kids and the press are talking about, you know, the third Saturday of October – like uh, it's going to be the old days, you know, uh, Bear Bryant and Johnny Majors on the sidelines. It's not. So, yeah, they, they could lose. I put them there because I, I really think Kentucky is, you know, the best team besides Georgia and Bama. Right now I think they've earned the right to be the third best team in the Southeastern Conference. But if you put Kentucky and Tennessee in a game right now, I don't know that Kentucky's offense – can score with them. You know, Tennessee's got dynamic offensive personnel and they can beat you with explosive play. Um, but that, you know, again, they, uh, that could be the kiss of death, but I've got them in the top 10 and, and LSU might take them out this week. Yeah. I'm not sure I would pick LSU, to be honest with you. I do need to I, clarify. There is, it's not this weekend. I counted wrong. It's next weekend, but it still stands yeah. everything that you're saying, right. the, the, the test that right. they've got. But yeah, they got a little bit of time to breathe and, and prepare for that game. I wanted to clarify there. Right, they do have an open day, don't they? Yeah, That's right. Yeah, Tim Brando, Fox Sports, with us. It's always great to have Tim on the show, Paul. Tim, what are your thoughts on Texas A and M? The the they had a lot of hype coming into the season. They don't have a lot of offensive firepower. The defense is good. It's uh, but they lost Anaya Smith. They wanted a kind of a miracle miss field goal this week. Where do you mm -hmm. see them headed? Uh, can you say eight and four? <laughs> <laughs> they can for sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's what I see. Uh, yeah. Arkansas, in my estimation, should have won that game. Uh, they lost it a couple of times, but we should have seen the wheels beginning to come off with Pittman last week when he was talking about how poorly they played against Bobby Petrino's Missouri state team. So, you know, he's the coach. He thought he was trying to be transparent with us and, and to maybe get the attention of his team. I think they may have gotten caught looking ahead to Alabama. You know, that's a big one they got coming up with them. And, and you know, that's what happens to, to these young guys. They are still, for the most part, unless you're at BYU, 18 to 22. Um, you know, there are a few, you know, older guys sprinkled in there. Um, I think Hendon Hooker is 24, isn't he? I believe he is, uh, the Tennessee quarterback. So there's a few isolated guys that might be quite a bit older. But I, I think to sustain success – over time is a difficult thing to pull off. The, 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 if A&M had not won the last two games, it would have been, I mean, should we just say it? <laughs> it would have been uh, a lot of um, uh, gnashing of teeth and calls for concern about getting a rebate on Jimbo's contract. 
So, you know, they really had to win these last two. How are they going to handle being in the situation that they're in now with the next two? Um, no, I'm, I'm not a believer in A&M. Uh, I wasn't before, and I'm, I'm, I'm not now. I'm not. Tim, you mentioned that 4 through 40, it could be a crapshoot. And, and, of course, there's still games to be played, evidence to be seen. Do you feel like it's ironic this is happening? Not that there haven't been other, been other years like this because of what we went through during the offseason and that this is only – proof even though there are still those who rise to the top the cream rise to the top that this is still proof of why the playoffs should be open to a lot of different people oh absolutely and and uh listen we had these upsets a year ago at this time in the regular season we all forgot about it Mm -hmm. because we all forgot about it because in the end we got stuck with what we got stuck with and and that's where and that's that's where we're going to be uh again this year probably as we get closer to the end and we get to November uh, and we're playing games that are very, very important uh, that mean, you know, potential slots and New Year's Six Bowl games and all that, those games, even though they might involve teams that are ranked somewhere between uh, number 10 and number 20, it won't matter because we know there's only four that get to go in. So everybody will be concentrating on the same teams that they always concentrate on. If it would be really nice. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, it would be really nice if um, if one of these teams that that we're always thinking is 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 going to be in it, like a Clemson. Uh, I don't think it's going to be Georgia. They're just too good. But a Clemson or an Alabama, if they were to drop two games, and I think both are capable of dropping two games, who are we going to insert in there? You know, who th- there could be a little bit of debate about. You know more than just the fourth position. Maybe there could be debate about the third and the fourth position. Okay, could a league, um, you know, get two teams in just because? Okay, um, I mean, there's the potential of that might be there if if both Alabama and um, uh, and Clemson dropped a couple of games. I, I, I believe it starts with NC State this week. Uh, that you, you guys remember, I was bullish on really three teams, Baylor the most, uh, Utah right after them, and NC State was the other one. And um, they got a hell of a quarterback. They got a great uh, secondary. Uh, Clemson's still got issues defensively. They can give up big plays. I think Hartman, Sam Hartman, gave them uh, gave NC State a nice blueprint to work with. And, um, and I know that the Wolfpack uh, defense is better than Wake Forest. So – uh, that may be the starting point. Uh, can Alabama lose to either either Arkansas or A and M? Yeah, I, I think the potential is there. Uh, I haven't seen Alabama look like uh, Alabama the way we've uh, perceived them. Uh, really, it was sort of this way last year. If you think about it, uh, I think it's maybe even more so that way this year than last. And. Uh, and that's going to be really fun to see if that happens. Maybe it'll get people uh, to talk about other teams and, and really consider covering the entire sport as opposed to the same teams. Tim, will, uh, will you get a can? Do you, do you, well, how do you know when you games you get? Because I know you got Texas this week. Uh, we were hoping you'd get uh, Texas, to Waco, West Virginia. Texas, West Virginia this week. Sorry, uh, Texas, West Virginia this week. We were hoping you were coming to Waco this week for yeah. Baylor, Oklahoma State. How do you, how do you get your draw? Well, the, the draw is this. Uh, Joel and, and Gus are going to do Big Noon, and Big Noon is going to be you know, either Ohio State, Michigan most weeks in the Big Ten, or it's going to be a game like Red River whenever that falls to, to Fox. I, don't, I think that may be, actually be a, a, an ABC ESPN game this year, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, uh, Jason Benetti and Brock Hewitt do what is technically uh, called our second team, our B unit. And Spencer and I are the, the C unit, the third team. Now, a lot of weeks we have three games on Fox. Uh, some weeks we don't, largely because of Major League Baseball, the NLCS, ALCS, and, and the World Series. When we have three games on Fox, Spencer and I are definitely going to be on one of those games. And so it was an either-or situation this past week where if – and I really do believe this – if Texas had won uh, against Texas Tech, my guess is Texas, because they're a brand name, that would have been 
the game that would have been on Fox. And the Oklahoma State uh, Baylor game would have probably fallen to Spencer and, and yours truly. I think that would have been our game. It would have been in prime time. But since Texas lost, and that was their second L, if you notice, even though Oklahoma lost to Kansas State, ABC, who was picking first this past week, still stayed with Oklahoma uh, and TCU for their early game. Uh, this particular week, they were picking first, and Fox had the number two and three picks in the Big 12. And uh, and we got the third game in the Big 12. So that means Texas and West Virginia moved to FS1 in prime time. Uh, uh, we're in a similar holding pattern this week. Um, and a lot will depend on how the Oklahoma State-Baylor game uh, shakes out. If Oklahoma State wins, you know, they're at home next week uh, with Texas Tech. It'll mm-hmm. be a hell of a game. Hell of a game. And if Oklahoma State wins that game, I'm reasonably certain that's where uh, Spencer and I will be. If if Oklahoma State loses uh, that game, I think there's a very good chance we could be going out west to do uh, Utah at UCLA in the Rose Bowl, which could be a great game. But that's because we have three games on Fox on October the uh, 8th. We only have two games on Fox on October the 1st. So that's how that works. And And the selection process, changes in the Big 12 deal from who picks first on alternating weeks. So it's not consistently going to be this way, but that's the way it shipped out this time around. And I by the way, I mean, you're gonna, I've gotten some texts from some people. You know, it was uh, it was Joe Davis and Brock Heward before, and now it's Jason Benetti and, and Brock, and they're tremendous. I love those guys. I think the world of Jason, he's a great broadcaster, hell of a story too. Uh, the young man has done so much in his life. Uh, having gone through, uh, um, you know, what he's gone through with cerebral palsy. And um, if, if you haven't read up on him, you should. I and mean, I think he's got great pipes. He's a hell of a broadcaster. So that, that's how it works. And uh, and we'll just wait to get our, uh, our, uh, our, our working orders, and we'll march on to wherever they tell us. And as always, Tim, thanks for your time. We'll be watching and uh, hope to see you in Waco or with a Baylor game sometime when we have a chance to see you again. Thanks for your time. Yeah, happy to do it always. You guys know that. And uh, it won't hurt my feelings if Baylor gets on a nice run here. All right. <laughs> but yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a prognosticator, but I do play one on TV occasionally. Yeah, you do. And we appreciate it. I love okay. the fact you're fearless about it. Thanks for your time. Tim Brando, again, okay. when he says it, he means it. 